Hello there, one and all, and welcome to episode 311 of Love at First Scent with me, Purcell Ace, coming to you live from YouTube. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do consider doing so. And if you would like to support my work, you can find out how you can do that by um, looking up the link to coffee in the video description below. But I think what we need to do is start by smelling a perfume. You haven't actually heard me saying that for a little while. I think maybe we're going to be saying that a little bit more in the in the months to come. The plan, oh, first comment, first comment goes to Angela, who's saying hi, personal ladies and everyone. Natalia says hello as well. The plan is to cover most, if not all, of these goodies that you see on your screens right now, including the three new ouds from Garlin that several people have asked me to cover. We've got them here. Oud Nude, Oud Coal, and Cherry Oud. And I think we just need to get straight into it because I haven't even unsealed these and I've been waiting to share them with you. I have had a sniff of this one because I couldn't resist getting into this little vial. Um, lots of people saying hello, VBS saying, oh boy, Oud time. Yeah, absolutely. Hello from Texas says, Cynthia, we're faster than Rich Mitch today, says Natalia. Perhaps he's busy today. Tiny, tiny little bit of context. Galin, of course, are no strangers to Oud, as uh, a lot of you will be aware. In oh dear, really not looking forward to these, says Rich Mitch. You are here, uninspired. Have you have you smelt them yet? Now, Galin, as I say, are no strangers to Oud. In fact, they were, even though not a lot of people seem to be aware of this, but they were amongst the first um, Western brands to to get into the whole oud thing. In fact, they may well have been, well, they certainly were amongst the first French brands, if not the first, because they released an oud scent uh, 15 years ago, I believe it was, that was composed by Randa Hamami. And since then, they've flirted with the whole sort of Arabian oudi codes quite some time. They, they gave us a collection a little while ago that has since vanished. Some of those scents from that collection are in the Absolute d'Orient at the moment, uh, under different names, which is the kind of thing that, that, that Galin, of course, do. But these three new ones come under the L'Art et la Matière uh, range, which was repackaged last year. I think it's coming up to a year that it was repackaged. Um, and uh, I, I certainly didn't see any new ouds coming from Garlin, uh, and, and I absolutely did not expect three. But here we are, two of them composed by Delphine Jelk, this one and Oud Nude, and Oud Cole is composed by Thierry Vasser. So we should get straight into it. As I say, I have had an initial sniff of Cherry Oud. Keep the comments coming. I'm not in a rush to try these Oud fragrances from Garla, says Scented Moments. But you've got to say why. What, what is it? Is it because you think Garla couldn't possibly have anything new to say about Oud, or you doubt that it's really Oud. Um, what does the brow say, says Natalia? Anyway, um, let me remind myself of this one. I mean, certainly from, from memory, and I think I smelt it maybe a week ago, just over a week ago, I thought that... <laughs> I, th I thought that it provided what it said on the tin, as in a cherry Oud, fairly well. And it's the sort of thing that actually Madame Persolaise would, would would very much like. She hasn't sniffed these yet. I haven't I haven't um told her about them yet, because I have a feeling that if I do, um they will be going straight into her collection. Uh there's absolutely nothing new to say with the oud category, I think, says Bry. Mm, well, I think there's always something new to say. I mean, it, it's that it's that paradox of creativity, isn't it? There's nothing new under the sun, and yet we do find new twists to put on things. Um, uh, VBS says, how much do these retail for? I remember La Réla Matière were really expensive. They are very expensive now. But, I mean, you'll find the information on whichever Garlin website is relevant to where you happen to live, but but they are not cheap. Okay, Cherry Oud. See, I I thought that actually this was this was all right, but without without being groundbreaking or earth shattering. But what do you get? So, as you would hope, you do get a marked cherry note. 
kind of like maybe the kind of note that we used to get from La Petite Robe Noire. I forget which, I've lost track of which version of La Petite Robe Noire we're on, but back in the day, it was a kind of rose cherry scent, wasn't it? Like a black cherry scent. And you do get the cherry note done very, very well here. I have it on the reliable authority of several perfumers that a cherry note is quite a cheap note to do uh, in a perfume. And certainly, you know, th there's nothing wrong with that. I think I think that contrast between cheap ingredients and more expensive ingredients is something that actually makes a lot of perfumes interesting. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking of things like Kinesia 10 or Tuscan Leather from Tom Ford. So that, you know, that doesn't have to be a problem in itself. Um, so you get you get the kind of black cherry, slightly sour feel. And then in the base, there is the oud here is represented as as warmth, as heat, and as woodiness. So you don't get a strong punch you in between the eyes, animalic note, you don't get that fecal note, you don't get the barnyard note, you don't get the medicinal medicinal note. Um, in cherry notes, I usually get more almond than cherry, says all fact of stories. They are, they are not unrelated, so absolutely you would get that. Um, and it's, it, it's quite sort of straightforward, quite linear. You get the heat and the sourness of the cherry straight away from the opening. And I suppose through that, there's a kind of playfulness to it. So I, I genuinely have not smelt the other two, but I'm guessing that this one is is the playful flirtatious oud, if it's a cherry oud. I would imagine that the oud nude is going to be a light take on oud, something quite sheer and transparent, I would guess from the name. And then with oud coal, I'm guessing they're going to go for something really, really dark and more traditionally oudy. I mean, I, I will probably be proved wrong. Um, but this is this is the one that has got a kind of slightly flirtatious feel to it, maybe almost like a chocolatey feel to it. You can imagine cherries dripping a very, very thick, dark red syrup. I think it's it, it's quite attractive, but as I say, without being wildly original, um, these oods are very powerful, says Paul's selection. Well, this one is certainly strong. I mean, it doesn't hold back, but I'd be interested to see if the nude one is powerful as well. We do have a press release for these as well. So I think we should just sort of put the blotter to one side here. This is like a feature length one that we haven't done for a while. Put the blotter to one side here and and, and come back to them. Um, it reminded me of La Petite Robe Noire plus oud, says all fact of stories. I love the dry down of this one. Well, there you go. So let us unveil the nude one, so to speak. Um, is it £400 attractive, says Natalia. Do they really retail at £400? I should look that up. I mean, that's... I, I didn't think this size was... Because there are two sizes now of Lava Malta. Okay, hang on. Let me get the noise out of the way. Pop that there. I do clear up after myself. You will be reassured to know. Okay, let's label the little blotter. What have we got? So this is another one from Delphine Jelk. Ah, okay, so interesting colour. I mean, these are all, I'm sure, artificially coloured. In fact, there's probably some colours on the ingredients list. Yes, there's a red and a yellow and so on and so forth. Um, but interesting that they've gone for that colour. I, I, I personally wish they just wouldn't artificially Colour. I assume Oud Nude is another vanilla, says Iris Hedonist. Um, well, we shall find out. So here we go. Oud Nude from Garlin. Pretty new. I think it's only been out for a few weeks, hasn't it? And let us see what Delphine has to say to us about nude ouds. Not vanilla almond, says all fact of stories. Well, well, well let's find out. Oh gosh, that's quite nice actually. Um, who said vanilla? Have you have, have you already sort of read something about this? Because it is vanillic, but also oh, something very, very, very 
mildly musky about it. I'm sort of thinking of like cashmiran type musks, you know, very, very sort of velvety and skin nuzzly, which ties in with the nude concept. Um, and the, the, the oud, you know, if we're going to sort of say oud, but the oud effect or the oud note or the oud accord, the oud feel, again comes through as a warmth. So it's it's interesting to think about what it isn't. So once again, it isn't overly animalic, overly barnyard, overly medicinal, but it's woody and heated. And maybe this one has actually got a touch of that kind of gorgeous petroleum aspect that I love from a good oud, which ties in really interestingly um, with the vanilla. The nude one, says Paul Selection, is Spiritua's Double Vanille on steroids. <laughs> I, I can see what you mean. I mean, because, because there's a lot more going on here besides just the vanilla, I didn't think of Spiritua's. Um, but, ah, I, I, I was expecting this to be a lot lighter, a lot quieter, a lot more nude but in a way it, perhaps it's a little bit more like let's get nude if you see what i mean there's it's very 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 slinkily sensual um interesting interesting we need to we need to definitely check out the um the press release so let's put that one aside for a sec as well we will come back to these blotters uh mb says hello from tampa florida so happy to catch a live stream finally you're very very welcome watching while i work love your videos they always put me in a good mood i hope this one will be no exception ashwak says sadly most brands seem to highlight only those facets of oud with some ambery and warmth qualities i recently bought some oils that has blue pink lotus and oris in trails utterly beautiful stuff yes i suppose ultimately they've got to go for what they think people out there are going to want to purchase but let's do the third one and then we can compare and contrast and look at the press release so this is oud coal um or col um oh david's arranging a meetup with other people watching you go for it david and this one is composed by terry vassa right let's see is this one going to be quite dark? Okay, not, not, I mean, yeah, I guess it's heading towards blackness, but okay. I am not a fan of the direction in which Galilean is going, says Spaced Out. The oud trend is overdone, in my opinion. Well, I mean, I, I think, I think we're all agreed that it's overdone, but when a brand like Galilean decides to do not just one, but three ouds, um, I just kind of think it's 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 interesting checking out what they're doing. Um, does Oud Essentiel make any of these redundant? Asks Woozy. Well, let's smell this one. Um, Oud Essentiel is quite, from memory, quite different. That one did end up in Madame Persilaise's collection very, very quickly. So this is Oud Col, the final one of the three. Now this. Okay, not a single one of them has made me think of Oud Essentiel. So thank you for that prompt, Woozy. Um, this is like... This is sweeter than I thought it was going to be. I mean, they, interesting. But this reminds me of getting some of my favourite brands of like... Bukhur and mohallats and things that come in like little wood chips that have been soaked in perfume that you then um, burn on charcoal, the sort of stuff that I love stocking up on whenever I go to the Middle East. Um, this reminds me of that very, very strongly. And also it's it's got that kind of attractive cheapness to it that you sometimes get from wood chips, which is maybe a, a good point as well to talk about, because I saw that somebody mentioned the prices of the uh, Lara La Matière, and the large bottles apparently are £400. We, we can have a whole discussion about the relationship between the contents of the bottle and the price that you pay another time, but, but I do think it's complicated. I don't think you are just paying for the value of the stuff that is in the bottle, right? You're also paying for whatever ideas have gone into the formulation of the scent. You are paying, and, and those ideas perhaps come 
after decades worth of experience on the part of the perfumers. So there isn't, a, to me, a, ever a, as direct a correlation as some people like to make out. You know, as Francis Kirchion said ages and ages and ages ago to me in an interview, um, if you were to ever buy a Picasso, the amount of money that you were to pay for that Picasso is not a reflection of the value, the market value of the paint that has been applied to the canvas. So that relationship between cost and price is is complicated. Um, I'd rather spend that money on Russian Adams creation, says Natalia. Well, that that's fine. That's that's a personal decision, right? And what we spend our money on is a very very personal decision. Um, but this this really 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 makes me think of just picking up some of those wood chips, and and placing them on charcoal. And so it's got a lot of them tend to have quite a sweet kind of acrid quality, and then the heat comes out the oody heat comes out when you place them on charcoal so i'll be very interested to apply that to skin um and there's a kind of rosy inflection to it as well not what i'd expected i haven't labeled this gavin says picassos are not manufactured they are individual works so it's a fatuous comparison well it's it's not a perfect analogy but i think you can see what see what we mean um and, and i and i think kind of you're sort of in a way we're sort of disagreeing but also agreeing because what we're paying for with a picasso is the uniqueness is the ideas not the 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 value of the paint on the canvas so the, the analogy is that we are not paying for the the market value of the juice in the bottles and we're not just paying for that Anyway, that is that is a subject that can go on and on. Um, would it be safe to say that Oud Cole is the most interesting and unique of all three, says Sebastian? Do you know what? At the moment, I think the, mo the, the most interesting one is the Oud Nude. Or maybe that's because I was the most surprised by it so far. But I'm definitely going to smell those blotters in a, in a, in a few minutes. Um, let us look at the press release. Now, the press release for this is very, very long. And I do not propose to read the whole thing to you. It starts with a... Um, general sort of chapter or section about the l'art à la matière um, and so on and so forth and the, the, they talk about this new trilogy okay it says this fragrant trilogy celebrating oud wood has given Garland the opportunity for a new artistic collaboration reasserting the house's continuing commitment to contemporary creation and then they talk about some of the artworks that go with the oud um, I'm flicking through the pages here Anyway, this chapter that I've got on screen now is the new creations. So let's go to Oud. They start with Oud Nude. Okay, so let's see what they say about it. Laid bare, Oud Wood reveals an unexpected carnal sensuality, a woody, ambery, warm and spicy fragrance crafted by the Garland perfumer in a luminous harmony of nude tones. Quote from Delphine Jelk. I composed this fragrance like a fairy tale whose fragrances express the sensuality of bodies, their curves, their skin. A fairy tale oud. Um, it, it is interesting because that link with the vanilla is done very, very, very gently. It's a kind of gossamer oud with some curves behind it. Um, oud nude first reveals the curve of a white almond, smooth as polished wood, tinged with the sensuality of cumin and its warm skin scent. The cumin always comes out more strongly on skin. In the heart notes, a raspberry accord as troubling as the trace of a kiss brings out the blondness of a sumptuous atlas cedar wood. Illuminated by the cedar, oud wood unveils itself, softened by the milky sap of sandalwood and Madagascan vanilla tincture. A quintessential Garlin signature, this exceptional ingredient is extracted from organically grown pods, macerated in organic alcohol. You can see the direction that Garlin are going in with this, the same as they've done with the Aqua Allegorias. Um, let's just have another sniff. I mean, I, I didn't get raspberry, I confess, but maybe, but my nose was already rather full of cherry. Um, Yeah, I, 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 the cedar is definitely there. This one, this one is, it's the smokiness, I think, of, of it that's attractive as well. Um, cherry oud, cherry oud. Unveiling its most devastating crimson facets, oud wood takes on the lacquered shine of a cherry red note. Shaken up by the perfumer, it reveals itself in a fruity floral wood, 
with mysterious accents. And the quote we have from Delphine Gel for this one is, in this creation between the sacred and the mischievous, okay, so the playfulness is there, I wanted to play on the contrast between the rarity, mystery, and darkness of Oudwood and the smiling irreverence of Cherry. Fair enough. What else do they say? Plucked from Garlin's iconic palette, a lacquered red cherry accord teases the majestic Oudwood, a bold, vibrant chromatic clash as visual and tactile as it is fragrant, matching the mystery of black with the power of red. A clash of spices, burning cinnamon and cool cardamom reveals the fruity intensity of the cherry accord, a powerful, unexpected olfactory colour exalted by the duo of roses that blooms at the heart of the fragrance, honeyed Turkish rose absolute and a fruity Bulgarian rose essence. Shades of La Petite Robe Noir, right? Um, let me get the right blotter here. Um, yeah, and, and the cinnamon actually, now that they've said it, is coming through. The, the playfulness of this one, I have to say, is very, very, very convincing. But maybe it needed to be a little bit louder to be truly curvaceously playful. And finally, finally, what do they say about Thierry Vasso's creation? Uh, Oud Col, the darkest tones of Oud Wood, they say, are revealed by the vision of the perfumer in this blacker than black fragrance. Really? It's a little bit too see-through to be really black. Anyway, uh, with its somber accents of smoky wood and leather. In this work on oud wood, I wanted to capture the incandescence of Bahur. There we go. Well, you have <laughs> the captivating incense that has been burned for centuries in the Middle East. Interesting. Uh, known for its deep black color, oud wood is a material with a thousand and one olfactory nuances. In oud kol, Thierry Vasser has chosen to enhance its darkest tones. Like coal purifies the eye as much as it intensifies the gaze, Oudwood allows the Garlin perfumer to achieve his vision absolute black. As the scent opens, the metallic glint of aldehydes halos this blackness to reveal its depth. Okay, well, definitely, yeah, quite coolly aldehydic. Enhanced by their light, Oud coal shifts into a leathery smoky accord and Oud wood turns even darker. A moss accord with carbon effects adds its shades to the dusky palette. Then the unexpected delight of a caramelized praline allows Thierry Vasser to temper Oud's intransigence. Um, and so on, and then it goes on to the different caps that, that you can have for it. Um, I, well, I definitely Oud Nude is going to get some skin time, but the coal, the coal is now reminding me as well of one of the Oud's that Francis Kirchner did a while ago, but I forget which one it was because they had different, lots of different names. So there was a, there was a satin oud, there was a silk oud. It reminds me of one of those. It's see, I don't, I don't get blackness. There is this cool grey, silvery smokiness, but not black. Interesting. Definitely, definitely need to wear these on skin and also do some proper blotter updates. Let's just have one final sniff of the nude. Oh, that's, it, it's, yeah, it's it's doing lots of things, the nude. Okay, so how are we doing? You're watching episode 311 of Love at First Sent with me, Persilaise, live on YouTube. What have people been saying about this? Because we need to just take two minutes out to look at some comments. Um, so I will I will read the comments later about um, the, the sort of debate about price and, and value, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. Uh, Eco Jock says, sounds like they've just described a Phoenician trade ship loaded with goods. Well, <laughs> they probably did. I didn't get raspberry either in one of them, says uh, Olfactive Stories. Uh, New Light says, I don't think anyone would sensibly say that you shouldn't pay for the perfumer's art, but they are still commercial products at the end of the day. And I personally find Amen from Mugler, an artistic piece. Well, and, 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 and I don't disagree. Uh, VBS says, do you think Cole is tailored for a Middle Eastern audience familiar with Bahur and Oud incense or a global audience? I wonder if a Middle Eastern audience would think, hang on, this is the stuff that we burn in our houses. Why should we be wearing this? It's, it's interesting. I mean, I know they, they are definitely marketed for a global audience, but Garlin, I think, would be quite pleased to get some, some, some dirhams coming from these releases. Uh, and... People are also discussing Bois d'Armenie, I can see. Okay, well, we've got two more things to smell from two completely different brands. 
This is one that I would like to share with you now because I've worn it a couple of times and I think it is well worth your attention. This is from Quartana, and I, and I hope I'm saying the name properly. It's either Cartana or Quartana, the brand created by Joseph Quartana. Now, a few years ago, I guess six years ago, uh, I think he made quite an impact with his um, kind of poisonous garden collection. Some of you may remember, I think they came under the banner of Six Cents, unless I'm mistaken. And they were all based on um, poisonous flowers. And I remember being really, really taken with the Lily of the Valley. It was one of the most unusual Lily of the Valley scents that I had ever, ever smelt, I think. Um, and then he kind of disappeared off the scene. If we get him on this channel for an interview, I know that he has expressed a willingness to come on the channel, then perhaps I will allow him to explain himself why he disappeared from the scene. But he is back now with the first scent from what is, I think, going to be a new collection. And this is called... Um, how many of you out there, by, by the way, know this brand? And I saw a mention just now of Francesca Bianchi. I'm hoping to finish with Unspoken Musk, which I haven't sprayed yet at all. So I've, I've, I've got it here. So stick around if you're a Francesca Bianchi fan. This is called, my Italian is even worse than my French. This is called Hierofante, which, or Erofante, Erofante, which is the Italian for Hierophant. So as I say, I have worn this um, already a couple of times, including today. And um, the very, very first thing that I thought when I smelt it is the thing that I have continued to think when I smelt it, which is, and let's just, shall we, shall we, let's pop it on here so you can see the bottle. Well, oh no, it's a bit lost there, isn't it? Let's pop that there. Is that better? Yeah, that's probably a bit better. The first thing that I thought was, yeah, Bulgari Black, Anique Minado's Bulgari Black. Um, now, number one, I mean that as a as a compliment. Number two, I don't mean to say that it's like a clone or anything like that, but they definitely, definitely share more than a little bit of DNA. Um, and this is like, I mean, I'll try to explain in a little bit more detail what I mean, but having worn it now a couple of times, you know how in perfumery, a lot of the times, the, the, the way that things are moved forward, the way that things are moved in, um, in, in supposedly a new direction is actually by revisiting certain things from the past and making connections that haven't been made before. And so often, if we love a new perfume, it is because it's a kind of link of two or three other perfumes, but a, a link that we didn't know we wanted, that we didn't know we needed, and we didn't know we were going to love. So if I think back to Le Lion de Chanel, um, it somehow successfully merged Garland's Chanel Mar and Chanel's own um, Cuir de Russie and, uh, do I mean Coromandel? Or am I going to get that hopelessly wrong? I can't even remember now. But but whichever three it was, it brought them together extremely well and made you think, gosh, I, did, I didn't realize we, we, we wanted that. I didn't realize we needed that. Um, and this, the uh, Hierophant is like the thing that we didn't know that we wanted a connection of Bulgari Black and uh, stay with me, Garlin's Abrelonde, and also Frederic Mal Lodiver, which of course is a kind of harking back to Garlin Abrelonde anyway. And it's just utterly, utterly fascinating. So you get you get the kind of leathery, petroleum, medicinal feel from Bulgari Black. You get the rubbery feel from Bulgari Black, but you also get something very, very, very gentle, very, very faintly almondy, very faintly floral, uh, sweeping, majestic, whisper-like, which harks back to the effect of Aprelonde and uh, Lot d'Hiver. And it, it's I've, I've really really taken with it. If I have a criticism, it's that that I would just want it to be a tiny little bit um, louder. Um, but I also I think get that part of the point is that it starts off. Um, it, it's meant to start off, and I will read a tiny little bit of blurb about it. It's meant to start off like a, a rocket ship taking off, and then it becomes more meditative and more contemplative. 
and more inward looking. And that was, that, that was, if that was the intention, then they have succeeded. The perfumer, by the way, is Luca Maffei. Um, I have no idea whether he's a fan of Bulgari Black or whether he's a fan of Anik Minado's style. Um, but I would imagine at some point he would have smelled Bulgari Black and maybe he thought that he wants to kind of put his own twist on it. But really, really striking piece of work. Um, thoroughly enjoyed wearing it so far. Let me tell you a little bit about it. Uh, so we have... A tiny, not exactly a press blurb, but just a tiny bit of um, text about it. Uh, uh, Hierofante, or Italian for Hierophant, suggests a new archetype for men, says Joseph Quartana, one who travels to the stars within himself in order to find courage to act righteously here on Earth. So quite an ambitious piece of work, really. It's symbolic for finding valour during these challenging dark times. And as a fragrance, it's an imagining of the ascension aspect of the, initi sorry, of the initiation rites of the Ulyssinian mysteries, the reward. Do your homework, look up what that means. The Hierophant was the gatekeeper of this great secret, one that made initiates unafraid of death afterward, the actual rites unknown. I set the fragrance in the context of space age stylings and visual language for a psychedelic tie-in, the idea of outer and inner space exploration being one and the same. And then he goes on to say, a notable feature of this perfume accomplished by Luca Maffei is that it dries down from heavier to lighter notes to further the, reinforce the experience of ascension via rocket. And it kind of does, does achieve that. Um, th th this is some of the imagery that Joseph Quartano is talking about. So you can see how there's something ancient about it, there's something space age about it, but there's also definitely something quite quite trippy and psychedelic about it. And on the back of this, um, sounds like it's right up my alley, says Cole. Well, if you do try it, please let me know what you think of it. And and the perfume has divide, been divided into three acts. The first act is ignition. And within that act, the notes that we get are suede, uh, a gasoline accord and nutmeg. The second act is lift off, where we get smoky leather, and Styrax, and the third act is Arrival, where we get Golden Amber, Cashmere, and Vetiver, and a good dose of, of Bulgari Black and Abrelonte. Um, Where is it? Oh, here we go. Yeah, it, I, I love anything that has a kind of petroleumy, leathery feel to it, um, rubbery feel to it, and this, this was fascinating. This was fascinating. Not very many comments on this one. I'm guessing maybe it's because you're not overly familiar with the brand, or maybe you haven't smelt it. People still going on about the Garlins and the Ouds. Uh, experiencing fragrances with Amina says, I'm honestly over the cherry fragrance hype going at the moment. Well, anything can be done well, right? I'm sure cherry oud will be the most popular one, says Natalia. Um, Love Luca Maffei, says Cole. He's made some of my favorites. Do tell. Okay, interesting. And so we go from... Luca, Luca Maffei, he's Italian, isn't he? So we go from one Italian to another, brand new from Francesca Bianchi. As you know, we are fans of Francesca's work here on this channel. This is Unspoken Musk. Now, I don't unreservedly like all of her things. I did a review of another new scent that she released this year. I did a review over on the blog where I kind of basically said um, that I think maybe it would be interesting for her to start trying a few different things and a few different styles and to maybe not always be doing the the um, the retro sheep thing. Um, but, you know, that's just my take on it. She also needs to just express whatever ideas are coming to her and explore whatever ideas are coming to her. But this is her unspoken musk, which is a great name for a perfume. Um, Love Francesca's work, says Woozy, except for Sex and the Sea and The Lover's Tale. I hated those. <laughs> Fine. Well, it's, it's sometimes good to hate as well, isn't it? Now, this is a musk. So I know, well, no, all fragrances should be worn on skin, right? But we'll start with this one on paper and then maybe spray on skin if we need to. Unspoken musk from Francesca Bianchi. Oh. She's always, she, her, her work is always so dense and enigmatic and mysterious, isn't it? It's kind of like wave upon wave upon wave of perfume sort of coming towards you, undulating towards you. And at first you think you're going to be fine. 
and then that you'll be able to, to to ride the wave and withstand it but then before you know it it's swept over you and just as i'm describing that i'm thinking of the scene in christopher nolan's interstellar um and if you haven't seen that film you need to watch that film where they arrive i forget where it was but they are, they land somewhere and they see something in the distance that they think is a mountain uh but then spoiler alert they realize it's not a mountain and something is coming towards them um it's very very much got that same effect and what's going on here i mean it is musky i'm definitely gonna have to spray someone's skin in a moment it feels as though it's kind of purring it feels as oh it feels very 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 definitely animalic um shades of shades of musk kublai khan from serge lutins which is praise as far as i'm concerned um oh let's just go let's just go for skin because this is this is being a little bit too annoyingly hard to get okay so francesca on the back of my hand um is it muscoblai heart oh it is says natalia is it in the same style as under my skin oh i'd have to remind myself of that one sorry i don't know off the top of my head is the civet strong okay let's smell okay what it isn't actually is overly barnyard fecal so this isn't the kind of instant trip to the barnyard that you get from some formulations of like say Garlangiki. But you get heat in there. You get animalic without getting fecal. So you get you get bodies intertwined, heat, sweat, sensuousness and carnality as opposed to fecality, fecallessness. <laughs> um scatological, right? Oh, um I think it blooms beautifully with a little time on skin, says Amina. I would imagine it it it, it will. Um, it's a little bit... <laughs> I suppose there is a shade, just touches of barnyard coming through, but it's much more about heat and spice and locking the door and drawing the curtains and turning down the lights. And very, very kind of dangerous smelling. Let's see, I've got a little tiny little card. Not a huge amount of information about it. I had a tiny little card. Where's my tiny little card? Oh, here we go. Unspoken musk, says Francesca, is my personal musk. And in the olfactory map, it's located in a region closer to humanity and sensuality. It's not a fresh laundry musk. No, 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 absolutely not but rich of experience and intensity of emotions cultivated within. It is an emotional musk, she says, since it almost generates a physical reaction while you're experiencing your deepest emotions. Sweet, velvety, persuasive, dirty, flowery, human. I like those descriptors there, actually. Innocent and sinful at the same time. Musk represents the dichotomy that defines the human being. And she says that the main accords are musk, tonka bean, and iris butter. But she also goes on, goes on to say that we've got bergamot, immortel, magnolia, um, iris butter again, castorium, civet, patchouli, sandalwood, cypriol, and vanilla. And I think all of those you definitely get in there. But it it is it is really really quite intimate, and it's shades of musk Kublai Khan with. Maybe, maybe with Shalimar, there's some Garlin that I'm thinking of, some old Garlin. Hmm. I'm definitely finding it more interesting than the one we got just before the summer, which was called what, Liberty Narrowly, I think, or something, something along those lines. Hmm. Interesting. So, not a bad stash, really, for this episode of Love at First Scent. Let's do some. Let's do some re-smelling. Let me just try and clear. <laughs> Clear the old nostrils. So what have I picked up here? No, let's not start with that one. Let's see what Oud Nude is doing. See, it's already gone pretty quiet, or it could be that my nose is overwhelmed by Francesca, but but Oud Nude is, is interesting. And then Cherry. Cherry, I suppose, is in a way, out of the three, as it happens, the most predictable one. Um, because it's doing that kind of sweet, fruity oud thing that we have smelt before. And oud kol, it, it is just like burning those buhus, those little wood chips. 
which I don't know. I don't know if it necessarily makes it an oud scent. And where is Mr. Quartana's? No, that's the unspoken musk. Yeah, th th this this is the one for you to check out as well. I don't know if the brand does samples, but you need to check it out. Um, and then one final sniff of Francesca's. Ooh, after all of those, it's suddenly really quite filthy. <laughs> okay, so uh, there will definitely be a blotter update on these at some stage, probably probably within the next 24 hours or so. Um, stay tuned to social media for details of further episodes coming up. But for now, thank you very much for watching and hope to see you again soon. Take care now.